On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to Nightwise.com, the one and only website with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. My name's Nightwise, and today I'm outside in the big blue room we call the real world, where we have been uh, invited to the launch event of WePTV. WePTV is Flanders' first IP-only consumer television provider. They provide you with five to 10, 10 15 channels a month on your portable or computer device that is connected to the internet for a flat fee. Is it the next big thing? Is it built to fail? Or is it going to be something that is going to revolutionize television in Flanders at the moment? We are going to talk to the people that can give you the answers and we ourselves will be looking for the one answer that you want to know. Will we be able to watch all of the Abra ads on our iPad whenever and wherever we want to? All of that and more this week on Nightwise dot com. Okay, we're here at the WePTV launch event with Chris and Lisa, who are a part of the WePTV crew. And of course, uh, the first question that we have to ask, where the heck did you come up with this idea? Well, actually, it's uh, our CEO's idea. He wanted this for his own family because he has children who want to watch TV, but he didn't have access to TV where he lived. So he just built it himself which means that this is a hobby project that became bigger and bigger and bigger and now becomes a real product. Okay, so as a product manager, Lisa, could you describe in a couple of lines, what is WePTV? Well, WePTV is a TV that you can watch on your laptop, on your tablet, on your uh, smartphone, uh, live uh, by, uh, via the internet. Um, and uh, you're not stuck in, in a, a subscription, so, so that's really cool. And that's uh, what, makes, what, what makes us unique. And um, it's pretty cheap and it's a uh, very good quality. So. so basically you've got live TV on your computer and uh, am I talking 5,000 channels? Not exactly. By the way, it's all prepaid, so it's cheap. It's very cheap. It's not 5,000 channels. It's actually 15 channels because most people only watch six channels. Which means that you get, uh, you get your five channels in the base offering and you get 10 channels you can change every single day. So you get you got five basic channels, and then the five channels that you can pick are from from the variety of what, how many total channels do you help, do you offer? Well, this is a soft launch, so we only have about twenty, but that will be expanded really rapidly. We have contracts signed at the moment. Now, just to to give us an inkling of what's uh, playing in the market at the moment, how many channels does the average Flemish people, person, household uh, have at this moment? Well, um, I think. Personally, if, if I look at myself and my family, uh, uh, so they just watch TV um, to five channels uh, in general. Um, and sometimes, if they're really bored, then they go watch another channel um, that's not standard. But um, we're sure that nobody watches 200 different channels um, at, at the same time. So uh, that's why we want, want to keep it... Um, <laughs> want to keep it actually quite lean and mean uh, is not really the word but it is how did you make the selection of the channels that you were going to offer well we're actually planning on offering every good quality channel that wants to talk to us which means that at this moment we have a big variety we went for variety in the beginning uh, we had a lot of channels who wanted to talk to us that were all news but we actually chose to have a variety when we started and we're going to add more channels now Basically, any channel that has a niche audience is really welcome, and every general channel as well. Yeah, we're even uh, offering channels, uh, you know, uh, Caribbean channels uh, that nobody knows, but they really want to discover. Um, and like Chris said, niche channels that you would never find at a regular broadcaster, uh, but that we can offer. So, um, before we get into the content, uh, well, providers that are going to give you the content, who is this for? Who's going to be your target audience you <laughs> aside, aside aside from me people like you people like your viewers actually i want to reach the the early adopters i want to reach the people on social media and i think that they're going to love this because they have all choices and all opportunities that they don't get with classic media also when we look at people who are um you know you, you live in brussels you can't have vtm you live in uh, a place that doesn't have cable you just need internet so everyone who lives on the internet will love this thing. And also, 
uh, a person that doesn't want to be stuck, like I said before, doesn't want to be stuck in a subscription, yeah. and that ha that he has to, he or she has to pay one year in advance. Um, so they're really free to choose whatever they want, they, to, to, to choose their channels, to choose uh, the period of time they want to watch it. So that's our main advantage. And if I take a look at the Belgian household in general, you know, the mom and the dad, the mom who loves, let's say, Days of Our Lives and the dad who loves uh, Belgian TV like Gourmet and her stuff like that, are they ready for this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. You'd be surprised. There's, there's over 4 million Facebook accounts in Belgium. My mother, who is 63, 63, yeah, 63, uses Spotify. And our app is really, really simple to use. You just log in, or you remember your login, and you just choose a channel. But doesn't that really cut into the, into the general idea of what TV is all about? You come home, you, you just, you know, uh, turn off your brain, you sit down on the couch, and you press one button. You used to have to get up, and press a button and, and sit back down. But now you have this little box where you basically in one move sit down and watch TV. But now you have to fire up the computer, go to the site, log in, and how, how does that work? You have an iPad with you. You just take your iPad, you put it on, you push a button and you start watching. You go to the bathroom, you take your iPad with you. you you're in bed, you're in, in, in the garden, you can watch TV everywhere. It's really simple, but you have to, indeed, exactly. You should stop thinking about TV as something you do on that big screen from a couch. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Is this the end of the big monolith in the living room? It's the start of the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. She's making a joke. It's not actually <laughs> It's not actually the end. Because we love TV, but we want to use it differently. So we want to use TVs. We want to use it through a setup box or a smart TV can have an app. We want to remove the the difficulty in getting the channels you want. But if you watch it on a TV, that's any device, is any device. Well, before we get into the, the, the technical stuff, how about the legalities of this? I mean, is everything, you, you have a 10 euro subscription with a 5 euro option to pick extra channels? No, we actually have a 10 euro subscription if you take it for a year, then you pay 120. You can also take it for three months, then you pay 33. And you can just take it for a month, that will cost you 12. And that will, that will get you the 10 channels plus the 5 you choose from, correct? The other way around. You get the 5 channels, okay. the base offering, plus the 10 you choose. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is everything paid for? This is going to be really funny because for an international video podcast, I'm going to give you some Belgian legalities because we pay uh, royalty fees, auteursrecht, as we say around here. So, basically, I have my subscription and I pay, I think it's about 10 euros every three months or something more, 13, for royalty fees that go to the television stations who offer me this content. Now, these, this 13 euros, is that included in your price? Yes, everything is included. You pay 10 bucks a month. You don't pay 12 or 15 or 100. You pay 10 bucks a month if you take it for a year. It's all included. Okay, and what about the classic um, funny Belgian word here? Kijk en luister geld? It doesn't. Well, it does exist still in Belgium. Uh, it exists in Flanders as zero. Okay. In uh, Wallonia, it still exists, but we are not actually a typical TV operator. You don't have to pay for us. Okay. Now, here's a question. You got a great product, and you shove it over the internet, which makes it great. It's available anywhere. You can do anything. You can watch it on the bus, toilet, toilet on the bus, whatever. Um, but you are shoving this over the pipes of the two major Belgian ISPs who, by the way, also do digital TV. It's not a problem. There was actually an interview in uh, Trends magazine where a journalist asked them that question. And the response was very simple. Well, your internet is your internet. Do as you please with it. But at one gigabyte an hour data consumption, we're taking a look at the bandwidth caps that Telenet, one of the providers, has removed. So they're basically offering you broadband. They're offering you a TV service, which you don't want because you've got WePP. They're offering you on-demand, which you don't want because you got WePP. And then you are going to shove them one gigabyte per user per hour down their throat. Are they going to be happy about this? They will accept it. They might not be happy about it, but they know what's up. They know that the internet nowadays is not something they can control. Net neutrality is not just an idle message. 
Yeah, but that, that brings it to here in Belgium. We have two ISPs, so people can go left, they can go right, left for Telenet, right for Belgacom, or they can crawl in a hole and have no internet whatsoever, basically. Um, these ISPs are going to say, look, you've got a competing product, you're using our pipes, they can just uh, invoke net neutrality or quality of service and put you out of business. I'd like to see them try. I'm, uh, that's a very, very nice attitude. I'm really, uh, I'm really, uh, I think that's adamant and that's, that's really interesting that you look at it uh, that way. Now, I should, say, I should say that they specifically stated that they have no problem with it, so I don't expect any trouble. Actually, they've, they've been really nice about it. I don't think they see it as a competing product per se. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch back to the social factor again. So we're looking at the, the, the early adopters, the geeks, the nerds, the guys with tablets and, and a smartphone and this and that, that want to watch their content everywhere. That's great. But these are also the people that don't like linear TV. They are used to downloading whatever show they like off the internet. They are used to getting the content when they want it, where they want it. You are going to give them the answer to be able to consume the content where they want it. But how about the linear factor of TV? Are they going to sift through the shopping, the shopping channel? Actually, no. What they will do is they will look up in advance what channels they want to watch, what programs they want to see, and they will just schedule that. That's how people will watch with TV. That's how they will use it. But on top of that, starting in 2013, we will have a movie video on demand service. So a movie video on demand service, that's what I want to watch movie wise when I want to watch it. <laughs> uh, well, actually, we had the news yesterday, so uh, we're not really uh, sure what we can say and how we can say it, but I'm, maybe Chris knows. <laughs> <laughs> We okay. are actually quite certain about the product itself. It will be an, op an opportunity to watch movies, video on demand through WPTV, and it's going to be a rather big catalogue. I will tell you later, when you're not filming this, <laughs> who we're partnering with, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, now the final option, what is still missing? What's the missing link to make WPTV as successful as it is that will actually blow away any conservative media that we are still currently consuming either via digital TV or via coax? Content? Content or formula. What's, what's missing? What's that one thing that you need to really make it pop? What makes you think we don't have that at this moment? Because this service is fantastic. It's linear TV. It's fantastic for linear TV. But I think that the way we're going to expand it you're going to really love this because we will have video on demand, subscription video on demand. We will have a way to watch it on any device eventually. And honestly, there's one thing we're going to add that's going to make it really, really nice to have or to buy. And I can't tell you that on stream, but basically we're going to find a way to make you watch it for free. And I honestly don't think how we're going to improve it. Then I've, I've, I've got... Um a question that me as a consumer, I just missed the ad for the Abra on the shopping channel. And I think that there is a void in my life right now. Something is missing. I saw this guy who had this, this uh, cream colored top on and it was absolutely horrible, but I want to watch this here. I can do that, but I cannot watch it now. No, but that's something we have to look into. Now we're launching it for a select public but we're going to listen to the public. We're going to look for what do you want? This is valuable feedback. Thank you for that. Maybe you should take a note for that. But basically, you tell me something, and I will think about it. We will all think about it. And maybe we can implement something that will help you with that. This is step one. As, a, as we take a look at what the competition is currently offering, Telenet is doing great things with Yellow for the moment, where you can basically consume either live streams or video on demand on their devices, on their network. The only thing that they don't offer right now is the shows that you scheduled on your DVR. You can only watch them on your DVR, on your setup box. Could we PTV provide an answer where I record what I want to watch digitally in the cloud somewhere and stream it when I want it? That's a really interesting idea. Not at soft launch. You need another product manager? <laughs> 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 to help out? No, no. There's just so much going on that we can't finish, uh, that we're um, communicating everything um, by step by step. Um, but, you know, there's so much to come. 
uh, but we can't really tell you about it right now. But you, you know, you have to just keep your eyes and ears open, and um, you'll be surprised uh, what will come. We might be hiring soon. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. Uh, Lisa, Chris, for coming on. I know it, it's all early days, it's very exciting, but I have seen some of the projects that were launched here in Flanders and did have big uh, consequences. We had small telephone providers we once knew that we thought they are gonna be out of business in like no time, and it turned out to be completely wrong. So, uh, what's on the horizon, big things? The whole world. Lisa, do you still have a classic TV in your house? I do, but I think that uh, it will disappear uh, eventually. <laughs> okay, so the website where people are going to go to, where they, can they sign up? How's it going to get started? When can they buy this? Today, weepy.tv. Okay, thank you very much and uh, good luck. Okay, we're here with Andrew, Managing Director, because CEO is such an, such an American word, such a Yankee word yes, of yes. Uh, WePTV. TV. Uh, Andrew, tell us, how did you come up with this idea? Um, well, it was actually my partner, Yuri's idea. Yuri's our, our CTO. He's, let's say, the technological genius behind what we do. Um, uh, he moved uh, from where he used to live to the coast. Um, uh, he didn't want a classical TV offering, let's say. Um, he wasn't allowed to put up a dish, so he said, right, then I'll build TV that goes over internet. And this was about three and a half years ago. Um, about two and a half to two years ago, our first alpha version of the platform was ready. Uh, and let's say that we had a first sort of stable version ready about uh, 18 months ago now. So if we take a look at this, this is actually basically a big sling box, which takes analog channels and throws them at your laptop or, or device that is connected to the internet, correct? Yeah, I think that you could put it that way. Um, uh, what we do is we indeed we acquire uh, channels from various sources, uh, satellites and broadcast aggregation centers, sometimes locally at the channel's playout center itself. And then we uh, put those into, let's say, uh, a big VP proxy and then make them available uh, via our applications to our end users. Yes, that's right. So, uh, what kind of encoding are we talking about? Uh, well, all the encoding is uh, H.264 uh, MPEG 4 part 10, uh, variable bit rate, um, and then packaged into uh, standard HLS. Um, the entire technical implementation is our own. So, HLS is H Apple's HTTP live streaming. Um, the entire technical implementation of platform we built ourselves, so there is no third-party uh, application, there's no third-party hardware involved. Uh, um, that that uh, typifies what um, what uh, what VP does uh, and uh, typifies us as a company that we build all our own telecommunication solutions. Okay, so you basically get all the streams, you encode all the streams, you blow them out via H264. Uh, then we're going to go client side. What are we what are we using uh, on the client? Well, you're using actually um, you're using a client which uh, basically is opening um, secured uh, M3U8 files. So they, these are M3U8 playlist files, uh, which contain uh, references to transport stream objects. Um, each individual transport stream object is, is a segment of a video uh, for X amount of seconds of a uh, video. Um, what makes us unique about the way that we've implemented it is that we have a, 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 a complete uh, server-side uh, security system that we've built in, which at the same time, uh, one, uh, presents a unique URL to every single user at runtime. Uh, so when you actually start viewing, the URL that you're viewing is unique. To so, it's, so it's unicast? It's absolutely unicast, yeah. You must have a really big pipe. Uh, we have multiple 10 gig Ethernet pipes, yes. So, uh, I don't know if I'm disclosing company secrets here, but where, where, where's, the, where's the, 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 the Wii PTV central computer bat cave? <laughs> uh, we operate uh, our, our uh, operations from multiple data centers, three in Belgium, uh, one in Holland, uh, uh, and a couple of broadcast aggregation centers, as I said, where, where we get channels. Um, I can tell you where our data centers are. So uh, Next to the big pipe in uh, Amsterdam, right? Well, uh, we have the operations in EasyNet's uh, data center in uh, 
uh, Schiphol Rijk. Yeah. Uh, we have operations in Antwerp DC uh, on the, the Noorderland in Antwerp. Uh, we have uh, operations at uh, level three in Brussels and at interaction in Brussels. So you're basically pumping out a unicast uh, to the end user. The end user has a browser. Yeah. Uh, no applications as yet. No no apps. Uh, the apps are being published in the store uh, or various stores. Um, uh, publishing applications with with content in is is always a slightly more lengthy process because you need to go through uh, you need to present uh, the clearance that you have with the content providers for the, the the content that you're showing them. So it takes a little bit longer, but we'll have some applications uh, available soon. Yeah. So the legalities is when I want to watch Hulu, I can't watch Hulu when I'm uh, when I'm in Europe. When I'm in the United States, and I want to watch, for example, stuff like Dirty Dark Sea, I get a legal warning. Yeah. You can just watch your stuff anywhere. Uh, no, um, uh, and yes, uh, technically yes, absolutely. Uh, a pipe's a pipe. Uh, exactly, a pipe's a pipe. Um, legally, no. Um, some of the channels we have, uh, we can allow to be viewed outside of Belgium. Um, some we can't. Uh, it depends on. It depends channel per channel. Huh? I'll give you a very concrete example. Uh, Canal Z, uh, uh, which is a, a news and information uh, uh, channel, uh, which is. Um, entirely produced of their own made content uh, we're allowed to uh, transmit outside of Belgium the same for a number of the, like, the local broadcasters and some other channels uh, other channels we're not allowed to because the, the rights and the licenses that they clear are only for Belgium okay so we're talking BBC and stuff like that it is not 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 per se even uh, it, it, your typical the, the biggest problems often is with with commercial broadcasters because um, like uh, all their other partner companies or sister companies or 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 or, or likewise colleagues in other countries they contract the rights for exactly the same content uh, in a different country so i'll give you a very concrete example um, uh, VTM here who might display Spider-Man 3 have contracted the right from whoever produced Spider-Man 3 Warner Dis I'm not exactly sure who made the movie Marvel uh, Marvel well they, they, yeah alright but they've probably subcontracted yeah, 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 it yeah. goes all the way down the chain but in the end they have contracted that specifically for linear TV in Belgium Huh? So they obviously can't permit you to transmit that outside of Belgium because somebody else in a different country might have contracted the rights for Spider-Man in, let's say, Germany. Huh? Okay. So that's the reason why. Proxies to the rescue? VPN endpoints to the rescue? Well, let's say that there's certain technical things that uh, we can do something about and there's certain technical things that we can't do anything about. So uh, we're taking a look. So the platforms are basically anything, Android, iOS, Windows 8? Yeah. Uh, Simeon? <laughs> I thought as much. <laughs> no, it's okay. So um, we got it behind us. How does it work? Uh, well, uh, how does it work? Um, I'll show you. So this is the live stream that you're seeing right now. Um, um, if I click here, um, you get uh, uh, a channel listing. This channel listing that you see right here is actually your channel listing that you have selected uh, and it has been generated for you now. So say that you um, don't like, uh, let's scroll down a little bit. Say you don't like uh, Kazoom, you don't have any kids, you don't want to watch kids content, you want to swap that out for uh, because you're Portuguese for RTP, which is a Portuguese uh, channel. Then uh, from the moment that you've gone to your back end, swapped it out, that channel won't be there anymore and you have RTP in place. So the channel list that you see is uniquely generated for your login at the time that you log in. Okay, now um, who's taken a bandwidth? Smack, are you guys taking the, the, the height of the bandwidth usage or are, gonna, are the ISPs really going to feel the coming of WePTV? Well, I think uh, that's a, a, a trade-off or a battle or whatever way you want to put it that will, be fought in the, uh, that will be fought in the future by companies like us, but it's today being fought by companies like Facebook, Google, who are the historical OTT operators. They already deliver masses of content to consumers every day. Um, of course, I mean, we are pumping out bandwidth, but that goes somewhere. Yeah? Uh, it's, uh, it, it might go to multiple destinations, but you know, it's going somewhere. So let's say that the load is shared. Huh? We send it out, but it has to go somewhere. So, of course, it's going to travel over another operator's network. Are you afraid of uh, net neutrality issues, especially since the Belgian ISPs are offering similar services? 
No, not particularly. Um, there was an article that uh, uh, was written about our services uh, in uh, um, trends uh, in the summer. Um, the, they asked for an uh, official uh, viewpoint by um, uh, by uh, the major ISPs, and let's say that the Belga and Telenet, at least for our uh, first uh, target market, are dominant. They both said that they would respect net neutrality and uh, and allow us to operate our services as uh, as would be expected. So, uh, no, not particularly. I mean, we're also very willing to go into constructive conversations with uh, with uh, with ISPs moving forwards because. Um, our technology allows us not only to, to send out our, our transmissions from a central location, but also to go and proxy those in another ISP's network to thus offload the stress on his or her network should that occur. Okay, and as an end user, what kind of pipe am I looking at? That, uh, that, what kind of bandwidth do I need to kind of watch standard quality definition? Uh, standard definition, you need about 2 megabit. And uh, on your mobile device, that would be? Well, uh, today uh, we're um, still uh, preparing all our, 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 our mobile-specific streams. When we're finished with that, it'll be about 300 kilobits per second. So a 3G will do it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, well, uh, I hope that it's going to be a big success. I've seen small startups in Belgium really rock the world. So I am very excited to where WePTV is going to go. Uh, I wish you and your crew a lot of success. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're here at the WePTV launch event in uh, Ghent, and we are talking to Christoph Peters, who is the webmaster of the Userbase website here in Belgium. Christoph, just for the people who don't know, what is Userbase? Well, it's a website, uh, it's a community actually, uh, with news uh, based on uh, broadband internet in Belgium, uh, mobile internet and digital TV. Uh, and we've got a quite large forum uh, with uh, a lot of people that, that come uh, uh, every day, uh, between 5,000 6,000 users a day. So it's, uh, it's not very, very large in, in worldwide terms, but uh, it's large in Belgium. So in Belgium, there is a you have the general form of the broadband user, the average user or the informative user who wants to use broadband services. WePTV is going to offer IPTV over those broadband services. After seeing the presentation, what's your first take? Well, actually, uh, our users uh, already made some uh, remarks regarding uh, pricing, uh, availability from, from uh, channels. Uh, because they're quite critical about the, the uh, product itself. Uh, um, because we've, we've got some challenges like uh, Yellow from uh, Telenet, uh, TV Overall uh, from Belgacom. Um, and, and it's, um, well, it, it's a nice product, standalone. So uh, I think it, it will work but not for people that already watch TV. They're not going to throw away their, their current uh, setup from, from Belgacom, from Telenet, uh, from TV Vlaanderen, where you need DISH. Um, so it, it's really for, for new markets, for, for people that actually digital native, like they said, uh, that, they, that only live and use internet as, uh, as the primary medium. So uh, I think like uh, uh, students, um, people that go uh, traveling and, and they want their home channels to, to travel with them, I think there, there is uh, really an opportunity for them to, uh, to work. So in, in Belgium we have the situation where our broadband providers <clears throat> also provide television. So this is actually going to be a competing product over their pipe. Do you see a net neutrality issue? Well actually yes. but. For now, there, there's not, never been an, an, an issue regarding uh, net neutrality. Um, so I, I don't think it will be a problem, but when the product gets larger, well, I, I guess they're going to have a problem uh, regarding bandwidth availability, because uh, I already heard it, it's about one gigabyte per hour you need uh, for the stream. It's a one megabit stream, so uh, one or two megabit stream. So. Uh, I don't think that uh, providers will be very happy uh, for, for uh, providing this, this, these streams. So I, I heard that they are already trying to uh, work with proxies at the providers itself so that bandwidth can be offloaded and, well, they're still working on that. So, uh, But these are, these are the providers that also provide the TV content 
aside as a competing product uh, for WePTV. So it's kind of a catch-22 there. They can't do it on their own. They can't do it with the help because they will be always competing with the one that owns the pipe. Uh, that's true, yes. Um, but for now, I don't think it's an issue. They're, they're not large enough yet to be really a competitor. Um, and, and they actually do something that the other providers can do. So, it's like they said, it's a one, uh, one end to one end. Um, it might work. So, taking it away from the living room, where we go like, okay, I'm on the road, I got my iPad with me, I feel the urge to watch the shopping channel at 11 o'clock in the morning, which we just did. Um, do you think it's a gadget for those geeks who want to be mobile, who want to watch TV all the time, or do you think that it's going to be for, it's, it's a formula or a concept for geeks who are mobile and who want to watch uh, the internet anywhere or watch, watch TV anywhere, but they're not really the audience for the streaming content that WePTV has to offer. So the target audience that wants to consume WePTV doesn't, isn't, isn't, aren't they going, are they going to be really interested in the content of streaming TV? Um, as they have local content, like Vidya uh, to be, they actually got some really nice uh, series and shows going on right now from the state. So it's a legal alternative. So uh, uh, we're talking Netflix and, and uh, things like that, which you can only use when you use proxies and VPN tunnels. They're not quite legal. So this is actually a legal alternative for watching well shows and TV. It's not on demand yet, uh, but it's, it's really streaming. So there's lies another challenge. Here. Okay, or so your final thought. This is going to be something for the digital natives, the, the the happy few that want this as an extra service, or this is going to be the one thing that will change television in Flanders forever. I don't think it will change television, um, but I think it's it's something for the digital native, for the for the people that really use the internet. Um, like myself, eh? I, I don't watch TV real time. I, I, I'm shift all the time uh, because the TV is not available. And uh, other people want to watch their, their daily shows. And, and I have really no opportunity to watch TV. But when I can watch it on my computer, why not? So you would love this because uh, you're somebody that wants to consume your favorite Jersey Shore or Twilight movies just about anywhere. Uh, well, that's uh, about it, yes. Okay, if people are interested in what Userbase has to offer, if they want to take part in the uh, discussions, where can they go? It's uh, http colon uh, slash slash userbase.be. Okay, thank you, Christoph, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Well, my dear flock, that was it. The confessions at the launch of the WePTV TV event. Is it going to be big? Is it going to be small? We don't know. But what we do know is that even in a confined space like this, I will be able to watch my favorite Abra ads while taking confessions from whoever wants to give them to me. I hope you had a great time. We had a great time. I want to thank the crew of WePTV TV for having us. So, the next big thing in Belgian television is about to head your way.